An archived booklet reveals how communist spies were instructed to blend in with Finnish locals with careful advice on the behaviour, clothing and table manners of the Finnish people. Pages from the Cold War era training document Life, Morals and Customs of the Population of Finland was first posted online in early 2020. Although not attributed, historian and Soviet archive expert Edward Andrushenko says the manual is almost certainly authentic. Andrushenko believes the document was probably made in the 50s or early 60s and appears to have been leaked by someone with access to a Soviet library but without permission to publish such material. In today's video guys, I am going to go through this kind of weird but hilarious guide to how to be a spy in Finland. Let's start this guide off with how the Finns eat. Use of a napkin. Placed on the knees, but not on the collar. You can wipe your hands and lips. This is how they eat with a fork. Do not assist yourself with a knife. This is how they hold a fork and knife. Use of a knife and fork. Cut roasts and appetizers into pieces as they are eaten. Hold a small piece with the fork. This is how they hold a knife. The fork should be in your left hand, not on the table. Thus they hold the fork, it is always in the left hand. Take bread with your hands, then put it on a plate on the left. A knife and fork on the left and right on the plate mean that the visitor continues to eat. While eating, bread is eaten with butter. Balls of butter are on a plate on the right. A ball of butter is taken with a knife which is on the left plate. Put on the bread and spread. Then the knife must be put in its original place. Lunch. First course. Soup. Broth. In front there is a shared plate of appetizers. Snacks are taken as needed with a special fork or a spoon on the shared plate. The first course is eaten with a spoon from a plate. Often the broth is served in a special bowl with two handles. In this case the broth is drunk like tea over the edge of the bowl. The bowl is held by the handles with both hands. A soup is eaten with a spoon from a plate. A broth is often served in a special bowl. In this case, the broth is drunk, like tea, again over the edge of the bowl. The bowl is held by the handles with both hands. This is how a glass is held, not at the stem. Wine, vodka and other alcoholic beverages are drunk in small portions. A glass in two to three doses. They don't clink glasses, they raise them to the level of their mouths and give toasts. After eating, the spoon and the fork are placed on the plate together, which means that the visitor has finished eating. The waitress brings the next dish. Cafeteria with a buffet. Lunch fee is around 400 to 500 markas. The visitor can choose snacks. The first, second and third courses, according to their taste, eat as much as they want. Plates, knives and forks are on the table along with snacks. A hot dish is on the stove or on another table. It is not recommended to put a lot of food on the plates. It is better to approach the table several times. Outdoor cafeteria. It is obligatory to take off the headgear. It is not customary to rush waiters here. Wait patiently, after all, you came here to rest. In a worker's cafeteria. Also in a restaurant, cafeteria and hotel, it is customary to pay 30 to 40 markas for a cloakroom attendant's service. Table setting for coffee. There is a sugar spoon in a sugar bowl. They take sugar with the spoon, but do not stir it in the cup. Don't take a coffee pot. This is a waiter's job. Sit and they will pour you a drink. Pour cream into your coffee by yourself. To taste, do not abuse cream and sugar. They drink black coffee more often. Sugar is taken with a shared spoon. It's stirred with a spoon lying on a saucer by the cup. It is usual to put two to three sugar lumps. One lump is equal to one fourth of a sawn sugar piece. Sawn sugar is one of the common names of Soviet made lump sugar. If there is no spoon or tongs on the sugar bowl, sugar is taken with hands. 
it is not customary to take sugar from a sugar ball with your own spoon. Stirring coffee. Do not ring with a spoon. Do everything quietly. Do not draw attention to yourself. Eating a cake. It is taken with a spoon, which is used to stir sugar in a cup. On the left, there is a creamer. On the right, there is a coffee pot. Now we move on to clothing. Tying a tie. Please note, the knot must be small. Reading a book. Don't sprawl. Keep yourself humble. Wearing a sweater, vest, under a suit. Pay attention to the hair and moustache. On a sweater, all buttons are buttoned, which is not usually done while wearing a jacket. A sweater. It isn't tucked into pants. A sweater is closed, but there is still a tie. A closed sweater, no tie is needed here. A sweater, such as a sports sweater, here is a light scarf instead of a tie. A summer suit with two buttons. It's usually fastened with one inner button, flapless pockets, the trousers are narrow. Wearing a suit. The vest buttons are always fastened, the pocket flaps are untucked. A suit with a jumper. Look how a pocket square is worn. Wearing a hat. A jacket is not buttoned. Now what about at a bus stop? Pay attention to people's clothing and behaviour. The usual headgear of rural areas residents is a kepi with a stem. At the market, even being dressed in a good suit, they wear backpacks. Waterproof short raincoats. Shoes with pointed toes must always be clean. For a man, his shirt collar, cuffs and shoes are a special concern. They must always be thoroughly cleaned. An elongated raincoat. It is rarely worn, mostly by the elderly. Pay attention to wearing mufflers, gloves and a hat. As a rule, the brim of the hat is trimmed with a braid. Holding a removed headgear and gloves. A belted coat. Wearing a scarf, pay attention, the headgear's top is held away from you. Wearing removed gloves, pay attention to a ring, it is usually worn on the ring finger of the left hand, the hand of the heart. A demi-season coat, look how they wear a muffler or scarf. A demi-season coat again, worn right on top of a sweater. A winter coat, a pushkin hat with a round collar. Here is a uniform of a glass factory worker. Pecs are common footwear for Lapland residents. A hunter's uniform is long rubber boots and a jacket. Now we move on to infrastructure. A tram. Get on the tram where others board, usually at the back platform. It is customary to walk on the right side of a sidewalk. You should walk slowly, waddling a little. A bicycle is a common form of transport in rural areas and small towns. This is how bicycles are left on the street if there are no special stalls for them. Here is a taxi stop. A small house on the left is a toilet. The nearest entrance is for women. The farthest is for men. Sign says, Naisile Miahele. This is a paid toilet. In the booth with the sign taxi, there is a taxi call machine. Here is also a taxi stand. Make sure to follow the queue. A petrol station. A long distance bus. Entrance is at the back platform. Exit is at the front one. The back of the bus is a smoking area. This is easy to spot as this compartment has ashtrays embedded in the wall. Here is also a special tourist bus. A ferry. Note how bicycles and personal belongings are attached to the bus. On the roof. In a bus, there is a mesh shelf at the top where you can put unnecessary things like a hat, a newspaper, a magazine, gloves, etc. But not a suitcase. There is a special compartment for suitcases at the back of the bus. Before you sit next to someone, make sure you ask for permission. Here is a stand for public messages, advertisements. Next to it, there is a telephone booth. Recreation in a garden or park. To sit down next to couples or women is inappropriate. 
it's better to look for free space. A bicycle is the main means of transportation in the countryside and small towns. Bicycle is the main vehicle in countryside and small towns. A hotel exterior. State flags of foreigners who have booked hotel rooms are hung on the building. Here is a hotel for two people. The price is 2,500 to 3,500 Finnish markas. There are three call buttons in the room by the door. The first one is for a porter. The second one is for a waiter and the third one is for the courier. Here is the interior of a Lutheran church. Worship in the Lutheran church. Worshippers sit on benches with prayer books in their hands, do not cross themselves and do not bow.